this video I'm going to go through another rational function. This one is y equals x squared minus 1 divided by x minus 3. Now the first thing with our when we're graphing rational functions is we're going to find our asymptotes. So to find our vertical asymptotes, I'm going to take my denominator of x minus 3, set that equal to 0, and solve for x. So if I add 3 to both sides, I now have x equaling a positive 3. That means I have a vertical asymptote line at x equaling 3. So I'm going to go to my coordinate plane and put a vertical line at crossing the x-axis at negative at positive 3. Next, determine do I have a horizontal asymptote or do I have a slant asymptote? So in order to do that, I look at the degree of the numerator, which I have a degree of 2, which means it's a quadratic. And in the denominator, I have, a de I have a linear function, which is a degree of 1. Since my numerator is bigger than my denominator, I know I'm going to have a slant asymptote. In order to find the slant asymptote, I need to do long division. So in order to do long division, I'm going to take... You can either use long division or you can use synthetic division. I'm going to use synthetic division. So if I look at my denominator, or it's usually my, I look at my denominator and it says x minus 3. So the vertical asymptote is at 3, so I'm going to take 3. And 3 is going to be what I'm going to be dividing. So 3. And then I take my numerator, which is x squared. And then this is going to be, I'm going to put the Yeah, I want to put the x squared. I have to put the, the coefficients. So the coefficients in here. Now with synthetic division, if I don't have a, I need an x, x term. I don't have an x term, so I'm going to put a 0 for that, that leading coefficient. So this would be 1. Since I have a 1, I have a 1 for my x squared. I don't have an x, so I'll put a 0 there. And then I have a minus 1 for my other uh, coefficient, or not coefficient, but constant. So with synthetic division, you take the first term, you bring it down, so this will be one. I multiply by the diagonal, so three times one is three, add straight down. So give us three, multiply on the diagonal, nine, and then I'm gonna add straight down That's going to be 8. Now, I do not worry about the, the remainder. So right now, I have a remainder of 8. Since I started with an x squared, when I do division, it's 1 less. The, the term is 1 less. So this is 1x plus 3 with a remainder of 8. But I only want this linear function. So with a slant asymptote, you're always going to get a linear function. So now, I'm going to graph x plus 3 on my coordinate plane, because that's going to be my, my slant asymptote. So to do that, I'm going to graph how I normally would do with a, a slope-intercept form. So I put a point at positive 3, and it has a positive slope. So up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, and so on. I'm going to now draw my slanted line for my asymptote line. So it's going to come up through here. Now I can choose points on each side of the vertical asymptote to find uh, points to graph. So I'm going to go to the right. So I'm going to put I'll just draw a table of values here. So if this is my x and this is my y. Now you can also put this on your calculator as well. 
but I'll do it if you didn't have a calculator. So if I have a four, if I put a four in for x, four squared is 16. 16 minus one is 15. So I would have 15 in the numerator. In the denominator, four minus, one, uh, four minus three is one. So I would have 15 over one, which would mean I would put four and then 15, 15 would be way up here. What if I chose five for X? If I chose five for X, I would have five squared, which is 25, minus one, which is 24, divided by five minus three, five minus three is two, so then I would have 24 divided by two, which is 12. So I would have a point at four, or five, 12, which would be roughly here. And if I wanted to do one more, let's say we do six, six squared is 36, 36 minus, let me put these numbers down here. Uh, this one's 15, that was 12. So if I did 16, or uh, if I did a six squared, 6 squared is 36, minus 1 is 35. And then I would have in the denominator, 6 minus 3 is 3. And then I would have 35 divided by 3. And 35 divided by 3 would give us 11.6 repeating. So 11.6 repeating would be roughly, say roughly here. So I know that the graph is gonna come down like this and then it's gonna wrap up and follow the oblique or slant asymptote. Now what about the other side? The other side, we'll also draw a table of values and we'll do three points as well. So I'll use two We'll use one and we'll use zero. So if I put two in for x, two squared is four, four minus one is three. In the denominator, two minus three is negative one. So I had three divided by negative one, which will give us negative three. So I have a point at two, negative three, So two negative three would be here. If I put a one in there, one squared is one minus one is zero. Anytime my numerator is zero, my denominator is gonna be, or my uh, fraction is gonna equal zero. So I have a point at one zero, which is my X intercept. And then if I put a zero in for X, that's gonna be my constants left over, which would be negative one divided by negative three, which is a positive one third. So I would have a point at zero one third, which would be roughly here. And if I want to do one more, if I put a one negative one in there, negative one squared is one. One minus one is zero. Therefore, I have a x intercept also at negative one zero. So my graph is going to look like this. That's how you can graph this rational function with a slant or oblique asymptote line.